Okay, so this is E2900 week 5 uh, lecture 1. Today we're going to talk about the Carnot map or K map and the reference is chapter 4 in your book. And the way I'm going to approach K maps is like the way I approach anything else. I'm going to talk about it conceptually and give examples. So I'm not going to give a set of rules. There are quote unquote a set of rules for drawing K maps, but it's the point is the conceptual approach emphasizes that these ideas have a beauty and a deep meaning to them, which I'll try to allude to throughout this lecture. Uh, let us start, however, by recalling what we were trying to do last lecture. That is, we're trying to design uh, minimal uh, realization. By minimal, I mean the final Boolean expression that describes uh, this design has the least number of logic gates. Design uh, minimal realization a two bit unsigned adder. And what we did is we first, last lecture, we drew a block diagram. This one is zero. And we came up, also came up with a truth table. So as I draw out this truth table, let me give some thoughts on this minimal realization. That is, in the good old days, that is the late 20th century, this uh, like late, even mid 1990s, it used to be that minimal realization, like Carnot maps were all quote unquote required that we need to minimize the number of logic gates. But now, however, the reason why we teach these ideas in digital systems design still, although we use the abstract FPGA, is that it helps you understand Boolean algebra, which is the core of, in, which is the uh, mathematical core of digital systems design. So it's imperative that you understand the ideas in order to become a very competent digital designer. That's actually true of education in general. You re never really should think what is the use of this and or what is the use of that, but rather try to see in nature, in what context do all these ideas occur. That will make your education valuable, which is 110110. Wait, something's wrong here. Let's see. 011. One, one. Oh, yeah. I missed one as I was talking. I was trying to pay attention. I mean, be mindful, but I still missed one. 101, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, then 1011. Zero, one, one, and finally. It's one one zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 one. The last four, so you have four inputs, so you have four sets of four, sixteen possible inputs. That's correct. So let's just add them. Zero plus zero is zero. This is a one. This is a two. This is a three. This is a one. This is a two. Two plus one is three. Three plus one is four. Two, three, four, five, three. Four, five, and six. So, oops. The question was, what is the minimal expression for S2, S1, and S0? So, to answer this question, what we're going to do is we're going to draw something called as a K map. So, K map is just another representation of our logic function. That this is not really a definition, but a conceptual idea behind the K-map that helps us visually apply Boolean simplification, Boolean algebra simplification techniques. So in my opinion, you can file the K-map along with the timing diagram, a truth table, a logic expression, representation of a Boolean function. And we apply Boolean algebra simplification techniques and there are essentially two rules uh, if you I mean again not rules but two concepts I'll write that associated with the K map uh, across any row or column across any adjacent row or column it's important the word adjacent and I'll illustrate this obviously with an example of this uh, minimizing the logic expression for this two-bit unsigned adder. 
But anyway, across any adjacent row or column, only one input, and this is also like circular. What do I? I'll see, and I'll show you what that means shortly. So let's just get over the let's get the concepts across. Only one input changes value. Second, we utilize encirclements. Encirclements, these are technically called covers of uh, ones. So if you want sum of products, we use ones. and zeros product of sums that are powers of two okay and again these two concepts are there for us to achieve our goal of simplifying boolean experience so first thing we're going to do is for our therefore for our two-bit adder for our Two bit unsigned adder, we need a four variable k map. Okay? Because we have four inputs. So the way I'm going to draw this four variable k map is I'm going to draw basically a square with 16 grids. And on here, I'm going to write my inputs in the order, like from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. So the most significant are x1, x0, y1, y0. And I'm going to have a k map for each output. So I have a 3 bit output. So let's draw the k map for s0, let's say. Okay. Now, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the first concept to label where each output is going to go. That is, across any adjacent row or column, and it's a circular definition. That is, the row, so if this is first row, first column, this is the fourth row. So that means the first row is adjacent to the fourth row. That's what circular means. And the fourth column is adjacent also to the first column. Okay, that means across any adjacent row, including circular definition, only one um, input, uh, or the technical term for this is a literal, changes value. So let's label this. So let's say this is 0, 0, okay? Then here, I can either put 1, 0, or 0, 1. The convention is I put 0, 1. So across this column, only x0 changes value, which is great. But this implies that for column 3, I have to label it as 1, 0, not 1, 1. Because as I go across this from column 2 to column 3, only, um, and actually I just screwed up, it cannot be 1, 0. It has to be 1, 1. Ah. Because if it was 1, 0, I will violate what I just said, the first concept. So it's 1, 1. That means across column 2 and column 3, only x1 changes value. So this becomes 1, 0. Okay? That's what the only thing is, that's the only input combination left. So from column 3 to column 4, only x0 changes value. And the circular definition implies when you go from column 4 to column 1, only x1 changes value. Okay? So similarly, we do the rows. So now what we have to do is we have to fill in the outputs. Okay? So to do that, I highly recommend that you label what each square is in unsigned, I mean, uh, unsigned integer notation. So you don't make mistakes when you're translating the entries in the truth table to the entries in each square of the K map. Uh, or as you get better with this, you can directly draw a K map and just write out what the outputs are. However, I highly recommend you do this. So this is. 0 and this is 1 because why this uh, 1 and um, 
integer is 0, 0, 0, 1. Yes. Now notice 2 is here, 3 is here, 4 is here, 5 is here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay. So there's my labeling. That's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the outputs. So let's look at that. For this, what I'm going to do is so it's 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Beautiful pattern. So let's do that. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. There it is. And hopefully it doesn't crash. Sip my coffee here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is let me just close this and then open it up again because I was strange when it might crash. All right. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to apply the second concept. That is, we need to. So, for example, from here you can write oh yeah s zero if you want to write sum of products. I'm going to similar concept applies to product of sums. So let's say I want to write the sum of products notation. Then entry 4, I mean, you can simply see it as x1 naught, x0, y1 naught, y0 naught, or with this entry. But now you can see that as I start, the K map shows, oh, wait a minute, I can combine these two using the distributive law. And we'll do that shortly, but then, if you notice, you want to ins utilize encirclements, covers of ones. There are powers of two, but since this adjacent rule implies that I, that's why we you we put this first rule or concept that since row four is adjacent to row one, I can do this right. So this is called as a cover. Let's call this cover one because there are two covers right. Now you can see first of all why you can you should only go with powers of two in the sense if you if you let's say there was a let's say you try to encircle this one. You can, but it doesn't help us, again, achieve our goal of writing the simplest Boolean expression. Okay. So that's cover one. Let's do the next cover. Which is that, correct? So our final expression for a zero, since we're doing sum of products, is going to be the or. of cover 1 and cover 2, okay, which I haven't labeled. Let me shortly label that. Okay. But what is cover 1? Let's just write out the sum of products express expression for all four of the terms, and then we'll see how the K-map helps us visually simplify it which is, well, for 4, it's x1 naught, x0, y1 naught, y0 naught, or with, let me go, 4, 6, 12, 14. So that's x1 naught, x0, y0, sorry, uh, y1, y0 naught, or with uh, 12 is x1, x0, y1 naught, y0 naught, or with, um, 14 is x1, y0, y1, y0 naught. And then I'm just going to leave cover 2 for now in the sense once we simplify cover 1, we can easily write out the expression for cover 2. But notice how the K-map really helps us in the sense I can use the distributive law, let's see, mm -mm -mm, on These two terms, right? Similarly, I can use the distributive law on these two terms. So let's see. Let's for the first one, let's factor out an x0, y1 naught, y0 naught. I get x1 naught or x1 or with. Uh, let's see. 
x0, y1, y0 naught, so not x1. Or that with cover 2. Okay? Aha! But not only can I simplify, I'm going to write it here, not only can I simplify this in this step, okay, but notice how I can now factor an x0, y0 naught and get y1 naught or y1. Or with cover 2. Yeah, I said factor instead of distribute, but I'm just very really excited. Okay. But this is not the point of using these four ones as cover in the sense if you want to think about the conceptual idea, you only write the terms which obviously do not change in these in this cover. And the terms that don't change as you move between these four ones are x0, correct? Notice across uh, column 2 and column 3, which is where these, th this cover lies, x0 is, doesn't change. And across row 1 and row 4, y0 not is the same. Okay, So that's it. And that's exactly what we get. So, this is simply x0, y0 not, And then using the same argument, you get for cover 2 as you go across column 4 to column 1 and row 2 to row 3, the terms that don't change is going to be x0 naught, okay, and y0. So, see how beautifully the K-map simplified. Let me get back to using the black ink or black tablet pen color. The or, there's the or, there's the or, there's the or. This implies a simplified expression for S0, which was beautifully spotted by someone in the winter 2013 2014 section of 2900. Is this actually X0 exclusive world with Y0? But this is enough for the simplified expression. And see how easily the K map helped us spot this. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the lecture, write out the K-map for the other two outputs, and then I suggest you do the same. We'll compare our answer and then end this lecture. So I'll be right back. Okay. So continuing in real time, it took me around like five minutes to do this. So here's a K-map for S1, and I have done the product of sums just for kicks. And just be careful that here, when the variables are 1, you do complement them. When they're zeros, you don't complement them. And for example, this is the cover representing this expression. So that's x1 or x0 or y1. Okay, and then add it out. Just remember what product of sums means. It's not that difficult. And here is the K map for S2. So basically, that's about it. And Notice before we leave this lecture, some of the patterns in this adder, right? For example, we found out that S0 is the exclusive OR gate. And if you look at S1, this is very interesting. You get 0, 0, 1, 1. And then these ones, they shift, quote unquote, upward when you look at this set of four as opposed to this set of uh, four outputs. Same thing here, you're shifting it up. And then once you shift these two ones, quote unquote, up again, they circle around. And for this S2, notice how we have all zeros, then a one, then two ones, then three ones, etc. Okay. So these kind of whoops, these kind of patterns uh, suggest that like there is there is another there are other structures you can use to implement adders, etc. I mean, in the good old days, the adder itself came as ICs, uh, integrated circuits or dips that you can put on a breadboard. And nowadays, you can also, nowadays on FPGAs, you have DSP chips that uh, 
on FPGAs, you have DSP modules that have adders in them. In other words, FPGAs do have adders as fundamental components nowadays in the 21st century. That's not the point. Uh, in the sense, the bigger picture is there are other structures besides AND and OR gates that we need to know as fundamental quote unquote structures in the sense the FPGAs have them on chip and they are used to they are the primary modules for implementing logic and in one word I'm talking about multiplexers and so next lecture we will start by looking at the multiplexer all right see you then